Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I are with our most famous boomer, our happiest boomer, our boomer who knows everything about booming, Bill Jordan. Hi, Bill. <laughs> our septuagenarian okay. boomer, Bill. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. What's that word you used? Septuagenarian. Means you are 70 years old. Oh, oh he, no. thought, he thought you meant snake. He thought you were talking about... <laughs> That's a serpentinarian. Serpent. Ah, right. Yeah. Oh, no. Yes. I, maybe I'm mispronouncing it. I am a relatively freshly minted 70 year old American male. Yes. And it and doesn't hurt at all, does it? That's the wonderful thing about growing older. People get scared of turning. I remember when I was 50, 60 sounded like a really bad age. I didn't, didn't oh, my God, what's going to happen? Then, of course, you hit 60, and then 70, oh, my God. But here I am, way over 70, and I'm not scared of 80. I don't know mm -hmm. why. Maybe I've just been through all these. So what was your attitude towards turning 70? Did you, did you approach it with any fear or any trepidation? Yeah, we know all of these ages or milestones or whatever. I mean, it, it all starts right here. Our yeah, attitude about sure. it, uh, if you were going to let turning, I mean, I, I've talked to kids that, you know, they're going to turn 21. They're old. They, they think they're getting, they're getting old. 25, yeah. 30. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be 30. Oh my gosh, it's over. They're going to be 40. They don't know that 40 is like the perfect age. But 50, 60, 70, it, it, 70 got my attention. We'll put it that way. It did not bother me, but I found myself very pensive, very thoughtful, very, I've always said the word incorrectly. I was I said, I'm very, con I told a friend, he says, how, how do you feel about your birthday? I said, I'm very contemplative about it. That's how I've always heard the word. He said, you mean contemplative? I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Templ you're contemplative? So I learned something in time for my birthday. Yes, I became very contemplative about turning 70. Um, but I have to look at it with, from my book, from Embrace the Boom, practice number one, the biggest one of all, is attitude of gratitude. Yes, yes. I, I have made it where many of my contemporaries have not. I have made it for what I believe is a reason. I don't know what necessarily what that reason is other than maybe just to keep doing what I'm, I'm trying to do. But an overwhelming sense of gratitude of watching my daughter grow up, watching my grandkids grow up and what, what all I notice about them because I didn't notice maybe about my own daughter growing up because I was too busy chasing. I was chasing the job, chasing the career to where my brain was always going and I wasn't focused on them. But now when I go over and I see the grandkids or they come over and stay with us, I notice like, wow, her language, you know, her language skills, are, they just take it off. Or my daughter's doing this now and how great that is. Son-in-law. And I just, I think I notice more. I think I notice more as getting 70. I got to tell you, I don't know if people are like this and you can't get on this loop, but so much. There are four songs that have been on a loop in my brain since <laughs> even getting close to 70. One of them, Roy Clark, I think, had the hit with it, but I really love the version by Glenn Campbell, Yesterday When I Was Young. Oh, yeah. It's a, it, it's a crusher, man. Yeah. It's a cr 100 Years by Five for Fighting. That was the last song I played on the air, by the way, in, in my radio career, because it seemed so perfect. 100 Years by Five. Five for Fighting, uh, Like a Rock by Bob Seger. Yeah. Another one about getting older in 20 years, where to go. Yeah. You know, what I used to be able to do, Like a Rock. Uh, that's a strong one. But the one that's really gotten me, and I believe it's from the Clint Eastwood movie, The Mule. And I'm sure it was inspired by a conversation that allegedly happened with Clint Eastwood and somebody. Somebody said, you know, hey, Clint. What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you doing tomorrow? He says, I'm, I'm turning 93. And he says, well, what are you going to do? He says, I'm going to start a movie. He said, well, how do you do that? He says, I get up in the morning and I don't let the old man in. <laughs> the name of the song is old, you know, Don't Let the Old Man In by Toby Keith, the late, great Toby Keith. And the, the lyric in there is when he rides up on his horse and you feel that cold, bitter wind, just look out the window and smile. And don't let the old man in. Ah, that's great. Mm. And it's 
So those four songs, look them up, Google them, YouTube them, whatever, if you guys want to put the links to them uh, beneath this video, I'm telling you, man, they are great. And uh, I, I would recommend you find songs that make you feel good. I like to start my morning every every morning, every day, um, with some kind of music that I just love. And it might be 60s or 70s or something else. But music yeah. is a part of my life. You know, you, well, you remind me that I actually do, uh, I don't have too many favorite songs about anything, but I do have a favorite song. Right up the, your alley here is uh, uh, somebody who I don't think quite made it to 100, but George Burns used to sing, I Wish I Were 18 Again. And, like that. Yeah, and I, you know, uh, I think I can speak for the three of us. The three of us, uh, you're 70, John and I are closer to 80. And uh, uh, I'm actually feeling better now uh, uh, because I'm taking care of myself better than I have in years. But I've always felt younger, and I think all, that's true of all of us and many in our audience. I've always felt younger and more vital than what my age was supposed to have been. And to me, the ultimate attitude was uh, George Burns who just kept going and going like, you know, the Energizer Bunny. Yep. Yeah. yeah I think, you know, if I, if I remember right about George Burns, he actually had a contract. I don't know if he, I don't remember mm -hmm. if he made it, but he had a contract to play Vegas or something on his 100th birthday. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So it's all, well, I, I mean, like a lot of it is in the, is in the mind, you know, well, yeah. as a man thinketh, so is he. Mm. Amen. And that's why I like to start the day with your book, Phil, Embrace the Boom book. I read a practice every day just to remind myself, and I'll focus 15, on that. 15, every actually 16 great practices to start the day and uh, pretty much carry you through. Well, you know, you John, John that, was, that, was a, that was a pretty brazen promotional spot that you just did. And I enjoy the book, but I like to start every day by having a hot cup of coffee in my overly <laughs> large. And well, doesn't matter which way I have it, I can always read the message. That's it. Cup. Okay. How many ounces is this? 15. 15. Of whatever, of whatever you want to put in it. Right. Uh, well, you know, coffee is the base. Anyway, That's it. happy it's birthday. Base. Happy birthday, and uh, you don't look a day over 18. And, and happy birthday to everybody who's even looking forward to 70. So There we go. Well, regardless of age. your age, live your life, forget your age, and embrace mm -hmm. the boom. Especially for my baby boomers. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.